Hi, I'm Sheriff Dallas Baldwin of the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. Hi, I'm Chief Tom Quinlan with Columbus Police. We want to thank everyone who is watching this video as we discuss topics surrounding this unique time in our country and specifically here in Central Ohio. As Sheriff Baldwin said, these are unique and uncertain times we are facing and we want to know that, what, that we stand behind everyone in our community. We know you have a lot of questions concerning COVID-19 and how law enforcement is responding. Chief Quinlan and I are here to answer some of those questions in order to dispel rumors and ease that uncertainty so that we can better understand the governor's stay at home order from a local perspective. So with this in mind, we called for questions that people in the community wanted answers to. So Sheriff Baldwin and I are here to provide clarity on what to expect from the police. My name is Sergeant James Fuqua, Columbus Police Public Information Unit. Again, I wanna thank everyone for submitting questions. Uh, Chief Quinlan, Sheriff Baldwin, thank you for your participation in this. The first question is going to be for Sheriff Baldwin. The question is, how has the job of the officer changed during the stay at home order and the COVID-19 pandemic? You know, our job really hasn't changed. Uh, it's the duty of us to protect the public. And I'm very proud of our deputies that continue to come to work every day. And uh, so our number one goal is, is just providing that safety. So our, we, we still do the very same. I agree completely with Sheriff Baldwin that the job of the police have not changed in the fact that we still are on duty, ready to respond to our community for any needs that they have for the police. Uh, we are exercising certain precautions of taking reports by phone and other ways of distancing, creating distance where we don't have to maybe come into a house because we may go from one house to another house and cross contaminate. The idea is to maybe have someone come outside in the open air, we can keep distance and resolve any police matters that way. So Chief Quinlan, this next question is for you first. If an officer pulls you over legally for a traffic violation, can they also question where you are going to prove you are following the stay at home order and are only out for one of the exceptions to the order. Yes, the police may uh, ask you, have a legal right to ask you if you're, uh, what your intended purpose is for your travel under this order. They will stop you for a legitimate traffic purpose uh, violation say, but while they are encountering you, they're allowed to ask follow-up questions since this is an actual violation of law. Yes, absolutely. If, uh, if you're stopped by one of our deputies for a traffic violation, we would encourage the deputies to actually engage you in conversation just to see if we can be of help, if nothing else, but uh, just to be friendly and, and to uh, kind of ask why you're out there. The next question is for Sheriff Baldwin first. Will officers or deputies be responding for calls for service like normal with adjustments to being outside when possible, or will they not respond to calls that are not emergencies or quarantine related? At this time, we're trying to respond to priority calls only. Uh, anything that's minor, a minor uh, traffic accident, uh, theft report, or something of the lower priority, we're asking the public to call in on our website and to have that report taken over line. Anything of a high priority, we are responding to. As Chief Quinlan said earlier, we're trying to ask uh, people to come outside so that we don't uh, possibly bring a virus inside or get contaminated, but we are responding to all priority calls. We do have priorities set on to which calls in what order we take those calls. We always have that in place. During this crisis, we are limiting the types of calls we're responding to that are not, uh, that can be handled without a presence of a police officer, where a citizen may just need something taken over the phone or need some uh, direction or some assistance. Um, so we are still responding. We're prioritizing our runs and you can count on the Columbus Division of Police uh, to be available to call to respond when you need help. I would also like to add that if you have a report taken online, a deputy will contact you within 24 to 48 hours afterwards. If you have a situation where you really need a deputy to respond, call and we will send one. How should people complain about a business they feel should not be open? Do they call the police or sheriff's office? The goal of the police is to stop and educate business owners or gatherings when they see them and make sure that they understand what the order is and that they're not supposed to be uh, together. For the public who sees a violation, what they believe to be a violation, we're asking that they call the Ohio Department of Health. That number is 833-427-5634. An alternative is to call the Columbus 
complaint line at 311. You will leave a message and that information will be routed to the appropriate, uh, whether it be code enforcement, zoning, licensing, the police, and that call will be followed up on, but it will not be immediately. So you need to make that complaint, we'll follow up on it and take the appropriate action, but the preferred course is to call the health department for them to follow up on. Okay, uh, Sarah Baldwin, the next question is for you first. What measures are officers and deputies taking to make sure they are not spreading the virus to people they are coming into contact with? Well, we are uh, encouraging our, our deputies to maintain the social distancing, maintain that six foot uh, rule. And as Chief Quinlan said earlier, uh, when we respond to somebody's residence, we're asking them to come outside. We don't want to go inside and possibly take uh, a virus indoors. And likewise, we want to protect our deputies from picking up anything. So we're asking them to maintain that uh, at the work locations. They're sanitizing the cruisers and their workstations uh, at the beginning of the shift, at the end of the shift, uh, taking the temperatures. We're doing all the safety protocols to ensure that uh, we're controlling the virus. Columbus Police is responding uh, very similarly to Franklin County Sheriff's Office. We are using protective gear when appropriate. We are maintaining proper distancing. But in police work, there are times when officers are not able to do that. We are making sure that we have proper decontamination uh, procedures in place for both the uh, officer's gear, uh, their person, and the vehicles. So we can transport people safely and we can take care of whatever uh, police action that we would need to engage in and not risk carrying that over to other runs that we have following that. And we also wanna make sure that, that officers um, don't take anything home with them uh, because we need them to be back the next day for work. So we have plans in place to how to uh, stagger work schedules to make sure we can sanitize workstations as well. Great, we're down to the last three questions. So this next question first, Chief Quinlan. Have any deputies been self-quarantined because of symptoms? If so, how many? And have any been tested for COVID-19? We currently have eight officers who, are, who have been tested and have all tested negative. We currently do not have any positive tests. Uh, we're very fortunate there. We do have 11 officers who are currently in monitoring, which means they take their temperature every day, they go through a drive-through station uh, at a health facility where they're asked questions before they can come to work and have their temperature taken. We have nine officers, nine officers who are actually in testing and waiting results. And we have four of those officers who are actually quarantine until the results uh, are, are determined. Well, at this time, we have had uh, no employee, no inmate, no staff member has tested positive for the virus. We have seven employees that are on quarantine at home, but they have not been tested. We've had four employees that have tested and we are awaiting those results. We've also had three additional that have uh, tested negative for the uh, virus. So, so Chief Quinlan, this question uh, is next for you. Can half mask respirators with P100 filters be used for police and donated by painting companies as well as auto construction workers? Yes, every officer on the division has been issued a half face uh, mask with P100 filters. They also have N95 masks issued that are disposable that they use anytime that they feel the need or when we go place with the fire department, they will advise us that there's a situation that we would need to don uh, protective gear. So we have those, we have the cleaning equipment to uh, sanitize those after each use, and we've trained officers how to properly remove uh, the, if the material or the mask when they're uh, been used in the field. As far as donating, we have uh, quite a few. Uh, the, every officer has the half face mask with the P100 filter. The N95 mask, the disposable one, is, is a filter or a mask that we are trying to get uh, more of. So those we would be open to uh, donations. Thank you. Thank you. And this is the last question for both of you, Chief and Sheriff. So I'll start with you, Chief Quinlan. What is the fine amount if someone violating the stay-at-home order occurs? It is a second-degree misdemeanor. It is a criminal violation of law which means there's a maximum fine of $750 and 90 days in jail. 
we are encouraging our officers not to make self-initiated enforcement activity. Instead, they can self-initiate an educational uh, interaction where they make people aware of what is occurring. If that does not work, the officers are being directed to take a police report. And remember, officers wear body cameras, so the violation is going to be on videotape. And we will forward that information to our police and community together team who will follow up with an investigation with our zone attorneys and our legal advisor. And down the road, if there's a provable, provable violation, then you may receive a summons in the mail if you're violating the stay at home order. What if officers and deputies come across groups of 10 or more? Well, we encourage our deputies to actually uh, confront the group and talk to them. We look at this as an opportunity for education and, and conversation. You know, our, our goal is to provide safety. And uh, we look at it that the group may not uh, actually know the danger that they could be posing by being too close, not engaging in distancing. And uh, we just, we really encourage the educational part of it. Uh, we think it's going to be a very, very rare circumstance that we would have to take any type of corrective action as far as making an arrest or a summons. That possibility is out there and we encourage everybody to obey the governor's order, but uh, we do encourage our deputies to look for the groups and, and to be responsive. I'd like to close by saying these are challenging times in our city. Both the sheriff and the police department are prepared to stand with you and work through this crisis. We hope to do this through education and through positive interactions. We do not want to take enforcement action where we don't have to. We are counting on the public to be good citizens and voluntarily comply with these orders. It is very important that the public follow the instructions and create the distancing, stay at home whenever possible, only leave your home for permissible reasons, and we will get through this as a community together. I agree with Chief Quinlan. Uh, these are the times where we need to work together and come together as a community. And by following the orders of the governor and uh, for a couple of weeks just maintaining that distance and staying at home, we'll get through this together. We'll get through it much better. So again, uh, we appreciate all the help from the uh, public, and we're here to, to answer your calls and your needs. So call us if you need anything.